And my problem is I'm not playing enough Tekken to learn the more advanced things I need to learn to succeed at the level that I've now reached, all right? That's just me being honest, all right? Everyone who I face literally has found an abusable, repeatable, spammable, repetitive strategy that they use over and over. There's no intelligent thought behind it. They just realize if I keep doing this move, if I keep doing this particular hit string, generally it hits a lot. And what happened last night was essentially for me the straw that broke the camel's back, okay? I'm in purple ranks. And I fought one player who impressed the shit out of me. I don't even remember his name. I'm sure you can look it up in the video from last night. He was a Claudio player. This guy finessed me, all right? He kicked my ass. He knew exactly what to do. He knew the basic strategies with, with Yoshimitsu. And he just completely countered everything I had. Seriously. Every time he fucking did, I did a move, he countered it. He blocked it perfectly. He broke every throw attempt. Literally every fucking throw attempt. He smashed me with counter hits. He tricked me. That guy was super fucking good. And I give that's the guy I give monstrous props to. Because you can tell the difference when you're playing online versus someone who knows what the fuck they're doing and knows their shit. And that's a respectable person versus I spam the same fucking thing online a million times. And because you just don't have knowledge, you just lose to someone just doing the same shit repetitively. Right? I hope that I've made it clear by now that I try and give DSP the benefit of the doubt. I try and cut him some slack where possible. And I would love to do that in this situation. I would love to be able to say DSP is finally acknowledging that somebody has some sort of skill in the game. He's not just calling them a pattern player who's spamming all of their moves. I would love to say that, but I think that DSP uses acknowledging another person's skill as a shield. That way you can't say that he never acknowledges anybody being good. That way he has at least one instance, one example that he can point to when people say that he complains too much to fall back on. So in this instance, I'm not able to give DSP the benefit of the doubt because I'm not going to give him any sort of kudos for trying to sneakily set up an excuse. He did the exact same tactic in Street Fighter 6. Every once in a while, he would face a player and for some random reason, this time he would give them props. He would say that they were actually a good player. And then for multiple sessions after that, anytime that anybody had any criticism about what he was saying about these other people, he would say that there's a difference and you can tell. And when it's applicable he gives these people their just dues when that's not the case and everybody knows it so yeah i was like wow this guy's great and i was like oh this is gonna be a good night because even if i lose right at least i'll say okay that claudio kicked my ass but if i fight that claudio a few more times i'm gonna learn claudio i'm gonna see what he can do i'm gonna learn things around it i'm gonna figure this stuff out and then what proceeded to happen was instead it was all spammers these again they have two moves that they do either this one or this one and just do it over and over and over and over and if you block it great and if not you're fucked because here they go again they do it over and it's usually characters like for example huarang he just kicks non-stop he's like kick it kick 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 okay where's my opening when does he stop kicking so i can move or i can press a button oh there is none kick it kick it kick it kick it kick it kick it what the fuck is this I hate to harken back to the last part that I did on this segment, but if they're only doing this move or that move, how are you unable to guess what they're going to do, DSP? How are you unable to read their moves? It should be fairly simple, being that it's a 50-50, just like hindsight. Let's say that you can't guess a 50-50, DSP. Let's say that you do genuinely need more information. You need to know how you're supposed to combat these tactics. Well, I have wonderful news for you. There's actually a built-in feature to the game called Replay Mode, and from what I'm told, it's actually a very robust mode. You can go back and watch the entire match, see what moves they did, and the game will actually tell you what you could have done in this circumstance to not get hit, to counter the attack. You can even take over live during the replay and actually engage in the replay. So you could actually try it out right then and there. If you really wanted to get better at Tekken, if you really wanted to get that character knowledge and understand what you were supposed to be doing when they do these moves, this is a feature that you would have looked into. This is something that you actually would have studied that you would go into after having several 
actual matches and having questions. And to me, that just proves that you're not actually interested in being better. You're just interested in complaining. You're just interested in blaming the game, blaming other people, and blaming competitive fighting games, which is a very wide net to cast. But I guess it doesn't matter at the end of the day how wide a net you cast, how many excuses you try and use, as long as by the end, it's not your fault anymore and you did everything correct and nothing wrong. Right? Now, again, I'm sure there's a way to beat it. I just don't know what it is. I haven't played the game enough to know that. And it's like that with every character. I pulled a Victor, and the Victor has two moves that he hits me with. He has this one move where his knife, he goes, eh, like this, and it's just like a counter move and staggers you and leads to a combo if it hits. Or this teleport slamming move with his sword, which I've never really seen before, and he just kept doing it over and over, and every time he did it, it tracked me, it blew out whatever move I was doing, and it would take a third of my health bar. And he just kept doing it over and over. Uh, so what am I supposed to do? Well, you're supposed to go to the replay mode because they give you an exact answer of what you were supposed to do in that situation. It really is that simple, believe it or not. And before anybody says, well, maybe DSP doesn't know about the replay mode. I know for a fact he does. He's addressed it before because his chat was telling him that there is a replay mode and this is how it works. So there really is no excuse as to why he's not using the feature other than he likes being ignorant. He would rather just complain. And I have no respect for anybody who has a solution to their problem and refuses to implement it simply because they would rather complain. There's nothing wrong with complaining, but if you have a solution to the problem, you better damn well do it and quit bitching. So here's the thing. <clears throat> when I was playing Street Fighter VI and that kind of stuff happened, I would turn to the chat and usually there'd be a handful of people in chat and they'd be like, <clears throat> okay, so here's the deal. This person's doing this to you. Here's how you beat it. You gotta be do to do Oh, okay. And I would absorb that knowledge on the fly. I would try it and usually I would improve. In Tekken, I'm turning to the chat. No one knows shit. Everyone's like, eh. I don't know. I'm like, well, that's not good. Because if I can't get advice on how to get better, I'm not going to get better, right? If I'm literally blown out by someone doing the same move 17, 18 times in a row, I can't figure out how to interrupt it. I don't know how to punish it. I don't know how to beat it, right? I'm just going to lose. And no one in the chat seemed to know what was going on or how to help me. So it was just a wasted effort, like a futile effort at this level. Okay. So it's the chat's fault that you lost? It's chat's fault that you refuse to learn the basic mechanics of the game and utilize the features that are given to you again in the game. It's entirely chat's fault that they weren't there waiting for your beck and call to handhold you through a fighting game. Something that you so proudly told us that you used to be a professional in. Make that make sense, DSP. Because you're kind of sounding like a whole ass clown right now. How are you going to sit here and be upset that people are not teaching you step by step what you're supposed to do when people do certain moves? It's a fast paced fighting game. What are they supposed to do? Analyze every single move and then start viciously typing in chat trying to help you? I think that if that's what you're expecting, you are more delusional than I thought. And the fact that anything of the sort actually did happen during Street Fighter 6 is still astounding to me. I don't know why anybody would want to do that for you. And again, this is the difference is in Street Fighter 6, I had that crowd along for the ride with me. I had tons of people rooting for me. I had people here ready to help and engage and, and supportive. And in Tekken, it's like the opposite. And we'll just take a quick look at his chat real quick to see what the response was to that. And you can see that nobody had a positive reaction to that. You've got Pizza Box Gaming saying it's our fault with the crying emoji. You've got Danny Perez saying shame on us chat. You've got Armor King saying that's not true at all. And then you've got Armor King again saying you never listen to us. It's just shitty to expect your chat to be handholding you like that. They come to see someone be entertaining, to see someone play the game, not play the game via text. Last night, all right? I had one tip all night. Jax Raxer, who supports every Friday Night Fight stream. That was it. Not a single other person contributed. There was like a small handful of Super Chats. So overall, for a Friday Night Fight stream, it's supposed to be the big hype fighting game stream. No one's really supported it besides the one regular. Right? It's like, there's all these hundreds of people here to, to make fun of me because I'm getting bodied because I don't know what's going on. But no one here to support. And that's what I mean. It's just become toxic at this point. Really, like me playing fighting games at this level, when you get to that level, have become a toxic situation where I'm playing the game and I want to improve, right? I want to learn. I want to get better. But it doesn't seem like that's what people want. Most people on the internet who are watching me just want to see me fail just to laugh. Well, I'm not about that. I'm about getting better. 
that's why I put so much time into Street Fighter 6. I love that he can identify that when people show up to his fighting game streams, it's to make fun of him. It's to see him lose. It's to watch him complain, whine, and bitch like a baby. But he can't seem to make the same conclusion when it comes to his pre-stream every single day. He thinks that people love the pre-stream. It's their favorite thing. They show up just for the pre-stream and then they don't watch any gameplay and it's super positive. When the reality is it's the exact same situation. A bunch of people pull up to the pre-stream to watch him complain and bitch like a big baby and then they just leave because the gameplay is boring as sin. It's selective self-awareness and only because it happens to fit his narrative that he's been pushing recently that he needs to do more pre-stream. The problem is that's not happening in Tekken 8. I'm not putting that time in and I'm not going to get better. Like at the level I'm at in Tekken right now, the only way I'm going to ever improve is to play dramatically more. So I'm not talking, oh, twice a week, two hours a day, uh, you know, two hours a session. I got to play like four or five times a week. And I gotta absorb character knowledge. I have to see what these spammable moves are that people are doing, and I need to get the solutions on how to stop that. And I'm not gonna do that how I'm playing now. You know what I'm saying? I'm just not. If you really did want to get better, yes, playing more is definitely an option and something that would undoubtedly help you. But I think what would help you more is if you actually utilized all of the tools that are at your disposal. If you used your time a little more optimally and instead of just trying to gauge your audience and figure out what they're trying to tell you to do to counter these moves that aren't happening anymore, you again go into the replay mode and actually figure it out. You actually think about it and use the replay mode as it was intended. But by now I'm sure that we're all aware that the one thing that DSP absolutely refuses to to do is utilize his time better is to optimize anything because if he actually utilized his time better he might have more dead air to fill he might actually have to have a personality and be entertaining and lord knows that we don't want that getting handheld through chat is pretty much easy mode chat interaction if you ask the guy um and the thing is would i be into that if people wanted it yes seriously like i like tekken 8 enough i've enjoyed the game i like its visuals i like its controls i like the engine I like things about Tekken 8 quite a lot, right? <clears throat> but if the audience isn't along there with me like they were with Street Fighter 6, then I'm not going to succeed. I'm not. Because I need to invest so much time into it. I'm just not feeling it. I think that it's a, it's a combination of factors. Factor number one, I played Street Fighter 6 for seven months. And a lot of people at that point got burnt out. And whose fault is that, DSP? It was entirely your decision to continue to play Street Fighter 6 for as long as you did. Like I said in the first part, I wish you would have quit way sooner because I was tired of seeing the goddamn game. And I was definitely tired of hearing about it by the end. And you knew that Tekken 8 was coming out. You knew the date that it was going to come out and that you were going to play it because people said that they wanted to see you play it. You were hyping it up even. So I don't know why you continued to play Street Fighter 6 for as long as you did, knowing that you were immediately going to go back into a completely different fighting game. I said, all right, fighting games were great. You made your point. You could be good at them if you want, but we're not really that interested anymore, right? So when Tekken came out, I was like, oh God, he's doing this again, right? And to the, then to the point where last week, Ed came out in Street Fighter VI and people were like, so you're dropping Tekken 8 and going back to Street Fighter VI to play with Ed, right? I was like, no. I invested a month and a half into Tekken 8. You want me to drop it all of a sudden and go back to Street Fighter VI? Like, what was the point then, right? Well, my hope is that the point was to be entertaining. I always hope that that's the point of your streams, DSP, because if you're not trying to be entertaining, then you're kind of just wasting yours and everyone else's time. And I did find it very strange that DSP didn't want to go back to Street Fighter 6, given how much he was claiming to have loved the game. Sure, he might not have been all that interested in the new DLC character that came out, but he did buy the special edition of the game specifically to get all of the DLC characters for the first year. So he wouldn't have even had to have paid anything to capitalize on the interest that his fans were very clearly displaying. So I guess you can add this to the list of opportunities that DSP basically had handed to him and still managed to screw up. So it's just weird, this attitude, you know what I'm saying? Um, and here, here's the other problem as well. Okay. Right now I am too inundated with RPGs. I've been saying this for three fucking months, too many RPGs in a short period of time. These game developers and publishers have fucked up. I don't care what your opinion is. You can disagree with me. My opinion is it's too samey. The games that aren't RPGs have sucked ass and too many RPGs have come out in a short period of time. These games have cannibalized each other, right? I'm playing Like a Dragon Infinite Well. I'm playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I'm playing Baldur's Gate 3. I've skipped like 10 of them. And people still are like, well, it's too much. I'm not satisfied. Well, I don't know what to do, right?
Well, I would think that if you're going to sit here and complain about having too many RPGs to play, that you wouldn't be canceling the one game that you were actually playing that wasn't an RPG. That seems a little counterproductive to me. If you're playing too much of one type of game, why would you cancel the only other game that isn't that type? If you were playing too many RPGs before, you're definitely playing too many now. And once again, this is a problem of DSP's own making. He's the one who makes his schedule. He's the one who agreed to play all of these RPGs knowing what times they were being released. He knew that all of them were going to be like the RPGs. There was no question about it. But here we are listening to DSP talk day after day about how he doesn't want to play these RPGs anymore, how it's RPG overload, how people including himself are burned out on RPGs, all while he cancels the only game that he was playing that wasn't an RPG. I'm stuck in the middle of a 400 hour, you know, ridiculously long playthroughs and I can't get through them. I'm playing as much as humanly possible and I'm still not finishing any fucking games. Baldur's Gate 3 is like 110 hours in. Final Fantasy is like 20. Like a Dragon is like 40. It's like, what is going on with these fucking games? Why is every game an insanely long RPG experience today? They don't have to be. Games don't have to be 80 hour experiences to be good. And these games don't have to be 80 hours long, DSP. You set the pace of your own playthroughs. If you don't want to do all of the side content, you don't have to. You could just play the main story and get the game over with since you're tired of playing it. You're right, these games don't have to be 80 hours long, but for all of the people who do enjoy these games, they're probably very glad these games are as long as they are. They're getting their money's worth. Because not everybody buys every single game that comes out like you do, DSP. Most people don't buy most games. I know that you're really out of touch by now because you haven't had an actual job or life in the past 13 years since you started being a full-time content creator, but most people have other shit to do and they don't buy all of the new games as soon as they come out. They buy a game that they want to play, they play it, and then they buy another game later down the road when they have time. It's driving me nuts. It is. And at this point, I'm too invested in the games to quit, but at the same time, I'm not getting the attention in these playthroughs anymore. This channel has stagnated in the last two months as I've struggled with juggling RPGs and checking A. And so, you know, changes have to happen. You know what I'm saying? Changes have to happen. Um, so what are the changes? Please, please, for the love of God, just say that you're going to be dropping like a dragon. I know that that's not the answer. I'm definitely recording this way after this clip was made. But Jesus Christ, just let him say it. Let the history be changed right now. I gotta play new shit, all right? New stuff's coming out. In less than a week, there's a brand new multiplayer game that I'm very excited to try out because it's a game that's from back in the day was super good and now it's coming out as a re-release with 64 player multiplayer. It's going to be chaotic and fun. I don't know if it's going to have longevity. Maybe it'll only last a couple of weeks, but still, it'll be pretty fun, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Man, he is really hyping up that Battlefront game, and I just don't think that that's going to go the way that he thinks it is. I don't think that his audience is going to be nearly as interested as he thinks they are, and he's definitely not going to be as good as he thinks he is. I really enjoy Battlefront. It's one of my favorite games from my childhood. I will probably wind up picking up the collection, but I'm not putting all of this praise onto it like DSP has been recently. He's really hyping up this game that I don't think he has nearly as much experience in as I do. But don't worry, you guys. Star Wars is going to save the channel, I promise. It's going to be just the variety we need. In addition, there's a game coming out later this month that's nothing like anything we've played for a long time. There may be a survival horror game coming out later this month that I want to check out. So with all that stuff, <clears throat> it's like, oh, that all sounds good, right? Okay, how do I play those games, right? When I'm playing three RPGs that are all like 100-hour experiences that I can't fucking finish because they're too fucking long, and I'm playing Tekken, how the hell am I going to play all these games? I mean, do you need me to state the obvious? Do you need me to say that he could just quit playing Like a Dragon, that he could just quit playing Final Fantasy, that he could just rage quit Baldur's Gate 3 like he's been trying to do the entire time? Because if you didn't, I pretty much just did. But I'm still not quite sure even after I said it that it was necessary. We all knew what the answer was. Even DSP has to know what the answer is. It's too obvious. Right? Something's gotta give. And when I'm looking at everything going on right now, and I'm look, I'm, I'm, Here's really where where the breaking point happened, okay? <clears throat> Last night, I finished playing Tekken, and I'm so fucking heated, and I'm upset, and the adrenaline is flowing, and I'm like, that was a complete waste of a stream. I learned nothing. Everyone spammed like fucking scrubby idiots, and I can't beat it because I don't have the knowledge to beat it. 
The only way I'll have the knowledge is to play more, and I don't have time to play more. So it's frustrating the shit out of me. It's making me feel like, man, what a wasted month and a half, right? Really, what a wasted month and a half for me here playing this game and sadly not really getting anywhere now and running into a, a wall, right? And this is why it's far more important that he just be enjoying games rather than setting himself these weird arbitrary goals of just getting good. If he just enjoyed the game, it wouldn't have been wasted time. If he focused on enjoying the game, he could have had a very positive experience with Tekken 8. His audience could have had a very positive experience and he could have moved on at the exact same pace. He could have rage quit in the exact same amount of time. But instead of a rage quit where we get to point and laugh at the guy, he could have just said that he didn't want to play the game anymore and was moving Moving on, he's got other games to play, and it would not have been robust for us at all. And he knew that he was going to run into this wall. It happens in every single fighting game that he's pretty much ever played. There's always a point when the player base starts to get better than DSP because the game has been out long enough that the people who weren't going to get good enough just kind of already left. And the only people that are still playing the game are people who are smarter than Phil, who have better reaction times than Phil, who have a better understanding of the game than Phil. Every single fighting game goes the exact same way. He knows that this wall exists for him. That's why I don't know why he insists on trying to be good and holding himself to some sort of competitive standard. Actually setting himself up for failure every single time. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, all that happening, right? And I'm, and then I look at the time. I had played Tekken 8 till past 10 p.m. I didn't even realize it. I was that heated that I just kept playing, kept playing, kept playing. And so I leave this office so upset and then I go downstairs and I'm, I have to apologize to my wife because I stayed like an extra hour I shouldn't have stayed playing this fucking game, being so upset at it. And now we have less time to spend together to relax and unwind because I idiotically was fucking rage playing this fucking game. And I'm thinking to myself, what was the point of that? Again, my hope is that the point was to put on an entertaining stream, DSP. I don't know why you're so confused about what the point of your streams are, but it should be pretty self-explanatory. And I don't know why he's telling us this. This didn't need to be said. This is a guy who's constantly telling us that he doesn't talk about his personal life anymore. He doesn't discuss things that happen behind the scenes. But now he's sitting here telling us that he played the game too late, stayed up past his bedtime, and had to apologize to his wife because they didn't have enough time to spend together afterwards. Seems a little too personal if you ask me, DSP. I don't I don't think that any of that needed to be said right there was zero point there's a difference between saying oh i'm playing a game and i'm really enjoying it and we're in a really good part and i want to keep going for now because i want to end at a logical stopping point so let's go a little further let's enjoy the game a little more let's actually push for a little bit of overtime on a stream or whatever and then you get something good out of it i got nothing good whatsoever out of being here late last night playing tekken 8 instead all it did was piss me off piss off the viewers piss off my wife and piss, everyone was upset right everyone now when he says that he didn't get anything out of doing overtime and it's kind of cringe that he calls it overtime to begin with but you know what he meant when he says that does he mean monetarily does he mean that nobody gave him extra tips for staying late or does he mean that he just didn't get better at the game for staying late that his frustration took over and he actually didn't accomplish anything because he didn't learn he was too focused on punching his joystick as if that was going to solve the problem and then we get confirmation that cat was pissed off she was downright upset that dsp had to do his little overtime you know overtime for the the job that keeps the roof over their head that pays for all of the food that she eats that replaces all of the appliances that she breaks yeah heaven forbid that he have to do a little bit of overtime and again i really hate calling it overtime he's just streaming stupid so why the fuck am i putting myself through that so here's the answer i'm not gonna fucking put myself through that shit anymore all right i'm not i'm sorry here's the modern state of fighting games all right back in the day fighting games used to take an incredible amount of discipline muscle memory skill because you had to practice and repeat and learn to get good in order to be at a level at a fighting game where you could get wins you actually had to be fucking good you had to have intelligence in your goddamn head and you had to have a level of skill of execution that has been completely removed from modern fighting games that's not true though, DSP. You still have to do all of those things. You still have to have discipline because you need to be playing the game as much as possible to be as good as possible. You still need to work on your perfect muscle memory because if not, you're not gonna be doing any of those combos. You're not gonna be hitting any of those juggles, none of those wall bounces. And you definitely still need to be good. I don't know where the hell you get off thinking that you don't have to do any of those things anymore, that there's like a one button press that you can do when you're just gonna start winning games online. That's not how this shit works. That's not how this shit is 
ever work. What I can't stand though is that he always acts as though other players are stupid because they use a character in a way that he doesn't deem acceptable. Oh, you use this move that I don't personally agree with for some reason? You're a scrub, you don't know how to play, and you're actually stupid. It's just disrespectful and completely ironic given who DSP is, the stupidest person in the room at all times. I've seen it now with Street Fighter 6, and I've now seen it with Tekken 8. What's happened is they wanted to make the games accessible, which they have. The games are accessible. You can be a dunce and mash certain things and beat people and get wins. You could do it ad nauseum and get the purple in Tekken 8. You could do it and get to master in Street Fighter 6. You can do it. You pick a better character, you mash the bullshit, and you just zoop, turbo yourself into a competitive level. Now you're not going to win a tournament, but you're going to win online. And it's sad. That whole idea of it used to take time and dedication and skill and effort and knowledge and execution to be good at a fighting game has been completely removed from fighting games. Now it's let's make it easy for everyone to just mash around and do well, and it's stupid. If it's so easy, DSP, then why aren't you mashing? You still haven't told me. If anybody can do it, if it's so easy to do, why don't you just do it one time and show us how simple it can be? Show us how you can be good. And how are you gonna sit here and tell us that these games don't take time, dedication, skill, and knowledge to be good at anymore while you're sitting here telling us that the reason you're bad and quitting the game is because you don't have the time, the skill, or the knowledge to do it? That seems like a direct contradiction, does it not? Because now what happens is you have to invest more time to get to a level where the game becomes competitive and fun because you have to get past this level of idiocy online. And it's just a waste of your time to have to do that if you're a casual player like me. Why am I trying my hardest to fucking ball bust myself, right? It's what it is, it's like ball busting. I'm busting my balls here to try to beat scrubs because they've made the games too fucking easy to abuse, right? Wouldn't be a DSP segment if we didn't have some sort of adolescent humor. So here we go, ball busting, you guys. It's like busting your balls. It's so frustrating. And it's not fun. That's the other difference, too. It used to be like when you get to a competitive level of a fighting game, it's fun. It's not anymore. To beat these people is not fun at all. This is annoying. This is utter irritation and time wasting, right? Sure, if I wanted to stream this game three, four, five times a week, then I would learn the character matchups and the strategies to beat their shit. But I don't want to invest that much time in it, and I shouldn't have to. Game developers have lost their way with fighting games because they made them too accessible for idiots to fucking mash online and get away with stuff. I'm sorry, DSP. I can't take any of that seriously because if it was so easy, there's no way that you could possibly be going 0-30 in one session. That seems kind of insane to me. Please correct me if the record isn't actually 0-30. That's just what I heard because I couldn't be bothered to watch the entire stream. There's no way in hell I was doing that. Why does every character have like two moves that are so overpowered? that they counter almost everything when mashed out, and then you have to specifically know the nuanced situation of how to defend against it, dodge it, or punish it. What is that shit? No, don't give every character an overpowered bullshit spammable fucking move. Make it hard to play, and then the game will be fun to play. You won't have a bunch of people going dur, 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 to get stupid wins online, and it dumbs the game down. And that's what Street Fighter Six is, and that's what Tekken is, that's what it seems all fighting games have become. If every character has one or two moves that are unblockable and super overpowered and you could just spam them, then it sounds like all of the characters are fairly balanced, DSP. I don't know where the issue is. Because it would make sense to me that anytime these people are spamming that move that you would just understand what that move is, understand how to counter it, and then in turn just do your own overpowered move. It seems like a pretty straightforward and easy answer to come to. Just make it so that dunces can fucking get a level of entertainment out of it. So that way you make more money. And I get it, you wanna sell copies, right? I totally get it. But at the same time, you've ruined the competitive nature of fighting games. The only way for me to play this game at an entertaining level at this point is to invest too much time into it, and you didn't have to do that back in the day. You just, you had to have natural skill. Do you think that all of the professional Street Fighter players back in the day didn't spend any time playing the game DSP? You think that it was all natural talent? They didn't practice at all. They were just born with natural Street Fighter muscle memory ingrained in their DNA or something? I mean, you said earlier that back in the day it took discipline, muscle memory, and knowledge of the game. You think all of that was just born into them? Because I think that if you ask any rational person that, they'd say no. Very clearly, they spent a lot of time playing the game. They spent a lot of time practicing. It is a time investment. And maybe that's why you did 
as poorly as you did when you were playing Street Fighter competitively because you refused to practice. You refused to actually play the game as much as you needed to to be on that level with other players. Just like in your streaming career, you refused to put in the time and effort that would be required for you to be on any sort of level equal to anybody else. Today, there's no natural skill. There's not. It's just time investment. And that's not good, in my opinion. All right? Why do you think it is that the best players in this game all are signed to teams? And they travel the world. The team finances their travel. And they play five hours a day minimum. And Because this is it. This is It's just time investment now. It's not skill. It's not knowledge. It's not ingenuity. It's just time investment. Well, they play five hours a day, DSP, because they want to be the best. They want to play the game as much as possible so they can understand all of the nuances in the game, so they can uncover new tech. That's where the ingenuity comes in. You sit here and act as though these FGC players, these people who play the game five plus hours a day, are not the people discovering all of this new tech. That They're not the ones that are chaining all of these ridiculous combos together so that other people can pick up on them and practice them the same way. And natural talent can only get you so far when other people are practicing, when people are putting the time in to better them themselves and better their craft. It doesn't matter how fast you can naturally run. If you are not running consistently and picking up your time, picking up your pace and increasing how long you're running, you're never going to be faster and you're never going to be the fastest. And that goes for any skill at all. If you're not putting in the time, if you're not putting in the effort to better yourself, then you can expect to be like DSP and just stagnate and become irrelevant. And if that's what you want to be, that's completely fine. Be my guest. But every day that I wake up, I do try my best to not be like DSP. I try to improve in some way shape or form well i don't have the time to invest in this shit i don't nor do i want to i don't want to be a competitive player i just want to have fun and the game won't let me so i'm not gonna bust my fucking balls anymore i'm not gonna be in this room past 10 p.m freaking out sweat running down my forehead my adrenaline pumping screaming raging punching my fucking joystick because i'm so angry because the game's such a piece of fucking shit with abusable idiots right and then I leave the office, I'm like, what the fuck did I just do? You've got sweat running down your forehead, you're upset at the game, and you're actively punching your joystick. Does that sound like the actions of an emotionally stable 41-year-old adult male? Because I don't think so. That sounds like a child, or at least a very hormonal teenager. DSP is way past both of those. He has no excuse for this, other than he is just emotionally stunted. He can blame anything that he wants, whether it be the game, spammers, lag, dropped inputs, it doesn't matter. Because the only person that's responsible for the actions that DSP takes is him. He's the one that decided to stay late and play the game. He's the one that decided to punch his joystick and get frustrated. It has nothing to do with anybody else other than his direct action. Now it's late as shit. I'm upset. My family's upset. Why did I do that to myself? Wait, what was that? Now it's late as shit. I'm upset. My family's upset. Why did I do that to myself? Yeah, I thought that's what he said. His family's upset, you guys. Remember earlier we called Cat out by name and said that she was the one that's upset? Now it's just his family. So that either means Mama Burnell is also upset or Jasper's downstairs crying next to Cat. Those are the only two options, really. So I guess just pick whichever one you find funnier and go with it. That's the story now. And the answer is there was no good reason. There's no good reason to do that. All right? So my decision is thus. I'm done with Tekken. I'm done with it. I'm not playing it anymore. I'm not. Because I've hit a wall where I don't want to invest the time needed to get better. I don't like the fact that the game is just online spam and it's abusable shit. I'm done with it. I'm not going to waste more fucking time on this game. I like the game and I respect it. And quite frankly, I think the online connectivity and, and matches is better than Street Fighter VI. Not that there's less lag, but there's less dropped inputs. And again, I would rather play a game where there's less dropped inputs and lag than no lag but half my moves drop. And I think that's where Street Fighter VI has missed the mark and they don't understand. Their game looks great online and plays like dog shit. While this game plays great online, but it just has more laggy moments, okay? So now that we're done playing Street Fighter and I guess done playing Tekken 8 as well, we are willing to admit that Street Fighter apparently plays like dog shit online. I've never heard him say those exact words. Maybe I didn't get far enough into the salt compilations to hear him say that. But yeah, now we get outright hatred for playing Street Fighter 6 online. Big ups. So I'm done with it. I'm done with, with Tekken. I'm taking it out of the schedule. Officially, as of right now, I made the announce I'm making the announcement. I'm done with the game. Uh, I like it. It's a shame that they want you to invest so much of your life to get good to stop the online spam, but I'm not going to do that. I have better things to do with my time, and quite frankly, you guys are tired of it. I already know you are, right? 
because you're not showing up. The only people who show up are people who are laughing at me, raging at the game and losing. People aren't supporting the streams. People weren't along for the ride like they were with Street Fighter VI. So I'm done with it. There's no point in me investing more time and shit into this. But you said yourself that you enjoy the game. You said that you would be interested in being better and dedicating more time. But now because people aren't giving you enough money, you're not interested in playing? I thought that you didn't play games for money, DSP. I thought that that was secondary. You always go on about how your primary goal is to share your experience and love for video games. And that's what's more important than money. At least that was the excuse that you gave on why you continue to play like a dragon when nobody's showing up but now that it's tech and eight it's a completely different story nobody's willing to pay me for it so get it out of here ban world makes sense to me i just wish you were a little more consistent on it um and that's sad because again i feel like the game is good but i don't think it's your fault at all i don't i think it's the industry's fault that they've turned fighting games into this you must sink so much time to like the game and have fun with it and that's stupid Sorry, no, I don't want to be a dunce going dur, 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 mashing the same move over and over and not even understanding the fundamentals of the game. But in order to pass that level, I have to put too much time into it, so I'm done. And it, again, it wasn't like that back in the day with fighting games. It was more based on skill, execution, talent. This is not the case anymore. And again, it wasn't raw skill and talent. They definitely put in the hours. They put in the time and effort that was required to get better at that skill. DSP is just pretending like nobody practiced back in the day. Like they weren't constantly playing each other at the arcade all of the time, trying to pick up new tech, trying to get their execution down. For something that he claims to have loved back in the day, it seems like he doesn't understand any of what was going on. Very similar to how he runs his streams, actually. Now it's invest your whole fucking life into it. All right? That's bullshit. That's, and that's Street Fighter Six and Tekken 8. It's an industry-wide problem with fighting games. You made them so accessible, now you expect me to invest my life in your game to even get past a fucking mid-level ranking online because everyone could just go, duh, duh, duh. That's stupid. Stop doing that. Stop making every move so easy to use. In fact, do the opposite. Make it so that most of the moves are terrible, except they're situational where they're good. Now, people have to be smart. They can't just go, duh, 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 because everything gets stuffed, right? Do that. I'd rather have a fighting game like that than a game where some idiot can just fucking mash buttons and get giant wins because they want to feel special, right? Oh, I bought this game for $70. Now I'm a god online because I mashed the buttons. Fuck that. Those days are so dumb. You go to the arcade back in the day, those people were laughed at. They're waiting in the line. Oh, here we go. And they go, dude, do the same move over and over. They get spanked. They get their fucking get back at the end of the line. You're never going to win like that, stupid. Actually have a, a level of intelligence in your brain and then come back and try to win. And let's assume that that's the truth, that that's what really happened when people would spam the same move over and over again back in the arcade. It didn't just happen. It happened because the opponent knew the move that they were trying to do and knew how to counteract it. And that knowledge only came through experience, through playing the game, through putting the time in, or through word of mouth of somebody else who was putting the time in, who was actually putting in the effort to be good and understand. It's nobody else's fault that you refuse to learn, that you can't identify a very simple pattern, that you can't see the same move coming again and again again and again. If you're falling for the exact same move time after time, the problem is you. You don't deserve to get to the next rank because frankly, you kind of suck ass. Not anymore. It's done. Fighting games are different now, you know? Sad. And again, the FGC won't ever acknowledge this kind of shit either. Most of them are ignorant of it. Most of them don't even know. They've only played fighting games for 10 years. They didn't even play games back in the day. They don't understand the difference, right? That's why when they step up and they try to play, play a game like Super Turbo or Third Strike, they can't do it. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. They don't even understand what fundamentals are. Because they literally, for the last 10 years, just went dur, dur, dur in their games and fucking got wins. <laughs> it's sad. Oh yeah, DSP, you're definitely in some elusive club where only the big brain individuals hang out. The Street Fighter 2 Super Turbo cabinet is definitely filled with nothing but high-Q players, obviously. It's so obnoxious to sit there and pretend that just because people play newer games means that they don't understand how to play the older ones. And even when that is the case, it's not because the game is older, it's simply because they don't have enough experience with it, they didn't put the time and knowledge into it because they play a different game. He's just so stupid and willfully ignorant, it's amazing. Well, not amazing amazing because amazing kind of has a positive connotation to it so i guess i'll just go with the word shocking it's shocking <clears throat> so anyway um that's that for me for tekken 8 had a good time with it love the graphics love the music by the way like the fundamentals of the game but i'm just not investing as much time into it anymore i just can't so that's it i'm done with it there's no point in playing it two times a week and losing endlessly to mashers okay <laughs> So yeah, that's the end of the Tekken 8 rant and the end of Tekken 8. Hopefully it stays gone, but obviously there's no promises. DSP just does whatever he wants, whenever he wants, like quitting Tekken 8.
But don't worry, fighting game fans, because Street Fighter VI is bound to make a return. I mean, Akuma is coming out eventually. He's going to play some of the DLC characters. He has to. But now that we're done talking about fighting games, let's take a look at some of those comments from the last video. The part one to this video, in fact. So big ups all of my members. I appreciate all of you. 713 says, my favorite DSP line from Tekken is, he beat me because he doesn't know how to play Tekken. LMAO, he's the guy who is not that guy. Never before has there been a more apt description of DSP, the guy who is in fact not that guy. Also, what a fantastic quote from DSP. It's completely illogical. It's right on brand for him. Drew, 6145, not a developer, not a netcode designer, not into FGC anymore, but obviously he knows more than them. He's the smartest and bestest. His my wife said so. Well, if we know anything about DSP, it's that he's always right and never wrong. So him being the smartest and bestest, according to his ma wife, follows a similar vein. Requiem Agent 3014. This is only partially related to the video, but who actually enjoys watching Phil unironically? He does the same song and dance every time. This wage quit was announced beforehand, and he does this all the time. Who are the people who unironically watch this guy? Is this a kink or something? Serious question. Well, the only thing that I really have to say to that is they're called dense for a reason. Watch Watching DSP ironically just doesn't make any sense to any normal human being. That's why you have to be a dent. Now, when it comes to donating to DSP or supporting him in any way, it might be a kink for some people. But if I'm honest with you, I don't really want to think about it that much. So to get off of that topic, I want to shout out everybody who watched the video, especially if you made it this far. Hopefully I'll catch all of you guys in the next video, but until then, make sure that you check out other detractor channels and dive deeper into that. Snore tags. Ah!